Have you ever sat very quietly with closed eyes and watched the movement of your own thinking? Have you watched your mind working, or rather, has your mind watched itself in operation, just to see what your thoughts are, what your feelings are, how you look at the trees, at the flowers, at the birds, at people, how you respond to a suggestion or react to a new idea? Have you ever done this? If you have not, you are missing a great deal. To know how one's mind works is a basic purpose of education. If you don't know how your mind reacts, if your mind is not aware of its own activities, you will never find out what society is. You may read books on sociology, study social sciences, but if you don't know how your own mind works you cannot actually understand what society is, because your mind is part of society, it is society. Your reactions, your beliefs, your going to the temple, the clothes you wear, the things you do and don't do and what you think, society is made up of all this, it is the replica of what is going on in your own mind. So your mind is not apart from society, it is not distinct from your culture, from your religion, from your various class divisions, from the ambitions and conflicts of the many. All this is society, and you are part of it. There is no you separate from society. Now, society is always trying to control, to shape, to mold the thinking of the young. From the moment you are born and begin to receive impressions, your father and mother are constantly telling you what to do and what not to do, what to believe and what not to believe, you are told that there is God, or that there is no God but the state and that some dictator is its prophet. From childhood these things are poured into you, which means that your mind, which is very young, impressionable, inquisitive, curious to know, wanting to find out, is gradually being encased, conditioned, shaped so that you will fit into the pattern of a particular society and not be a revolutionary. Since the habit of pattern thinking has already been established in you, even if you do revolt it is within the pattern. It is like prisoners revolting in order to have better food, more conveniences, but always within the prison. When you seek God, or try to find out what is right government, it is always within the pattern of society, which says, this is true and that is false, this is good and that is bad, this is the right leader and these are the saints. So your revolt, like the so-called revolution brought about by ambitious or very clever people, is always limited by the past. That is not revolt, that is not revolution, it is merely heightened activity, a more valiant struggle within the pattern. Real revolt, true revolution is to break away from the pattern and to inquire outside of it. You see, all reformers, it does not matter who they are, are merely concerned with bettering the conditions within the prison. They never tell you not to conform, they never say, break through the walls of tradition and authority, shake off the conditioning that holds the mind. And that is real education, not merely to require you to pass examinations for which you have crammed up, or to write out something which you have learnt by heart, but to help you to see the walls of this prison in which the mind is held. Society influences all of us, it constantly shapes our thinking, and this pressure of society from the outside is gradually translated as the inner, but, however deeply it penetrates, it is still from the outside, and there is no such thing as the inner as long as you do not break through this conditioning. You must know what you are thinking, and whether you are thinking as a Hindu, or a Muslim, or a Christian, that is, in terms of the religion you happen to belong to. You must be conscious of what you believe or do not believe. All this is the pattern of society and, unless you are aware of the pattern and break away from it, you are still a prisoner though you may think you are free. But you see, most of us are concerned with revolt within the prison, we want better food, a little more light, a larger window so that we can see a little more of the sky. We are concerned with whether the outcast should enter the temple or not, we want to break down this particular caste, and in the very breaking down of one caste we create another, a superior caste, so we remain prisoners, and there is no freedom in prison. Freedom lies outside the walls, outside the pattern of society, but to be free of that pattern you have to understand the whole content of it, which is to understand your own mind. It is the mind that has created the present civilization, this tradition-bound culture or society and, without understanding your own mind, merely to revolt as a communist, a socialist, this or that, has very little meaning. That is why it is very important to have self-knowledge, to be aware of all your activities, your thoughts and feelings, and this is education, is it not? Because when you are fully aware of yourself your mind becomes very sensitive, very alert. 
you try this, not someday in the far away future, but tomorrow or this afternoon. If there are too many people in your room, if your home is crowded, then go away by yourself, sit under a tree or on the river bank and quietly observe how your mind works. Don't correct it, don't say, this is right, that is wrong, but just watch it as you would a film. When you go to the cinema you are not taking part in the film, the actors and actresses are taking part, but you are only watching. In the same way, watch how your mind works. It is really very interesting, far more interesting than any film, because your mind is the residue of the whole world and it contains all that human beings have experienced. Do you understand? Your mind is humanity, and when you perceive this, you will have immense compassion. Out of this understanding comes great love, and then you will know, when you see lovely things, what beauty is. Questioner, how did you learn all that you are talking about, and how can we come to know it? Krishnamurti, that is a good question, is it not? Now, if I may talk about myself a little, I have not read any books about these things, neither the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, nor any psychological books, but as I told you, if you watch your own mind, it is all there. So when once you set out on the journey of self-knowledge, books are not important. It is like entering a strange land where you begin to find out new things and make astonishing discoveries, but, you see, that is all destroyed if you give importance to yourself. The moment you say, I have discovered, I know, I am a great man because I have found out this and that, you are lost. If you have to take a long journey, you must carry very little, if you want to climb to a great height, you must travel light. So this question is really important, because discovery and understanding come through self-knowledge, through observing the ways of the mind. What you say of your neighbor, how you talk, how you walk, how you look at the skies, at the birds, how you treat people, how you cut a branch, all these things are important, because they act like mirrors that show you as you are and, if you are alert, you discover everything anew from moment to moment.